for this project, you'll need a hand select 10 to 12 two by fours that have the least amount of imperfections like knots, wane, or bends. That way it improves the quality of your build. So typically for an outdoor furniture project, you wanna go with uh, something like uh, cedar, uh, but cedar is stupid expensive. So we're gonna go with something uh, more budget friendly and then I'll show you how to seal it to kind of withstand a long time. Now, one of the main tools you'll need for this build in order to execute it is a Craig pocket hole jig. Now, you don't have to have a big foreman like I have. That's just simply for speed and efficiency, just how often I build. You can pick yourself as little as the Craig mini jig, which is roughly around 15 bucks. It'll take you some time to get this accomplished, but you'll still do it. Or you can get what I had before this tool, which was the Craig K4, and that's a little bit about 98, 99 bucks, but well worth the investment. Now the build's gonna be created in three different parts. You're gonna have the back, the bottom, and the armrest. Now for the back, that's one of the first parts we're starting with. The overall width of the back is 72 inches long. That means we're gonna have four cleats that are two by fours running down the middle that are 69 inches long. It's gonna be framed out on both sides with a one and a half by one and a half two by four, basically split one and a half. That's gonna be your back. That's gonna accommodate three cushions that are the Ikea style size cushions. All right, first part of the build is the backrest. The second part of the build is gonna be the bottom seating area. The dimensions are gonna be similar to the backrest, 72 inches wide. The depth is gonna be the only variable part. It's 24 inches deep. The cushions that we're using are actually 24 and 3 eighths inch, and I just wanted the cushions to overlap a little bit on that. Once that's all done, the pocket hole screw layout really is just two screws per corner. Make sure the pocket holes are on the inside part of the build, that way nobody can see them. And later down the road, we're gonna use a recessed support bar to support all the cleats and the cushions are gonna sit on top of them. So that way you'll kinda know what's, uh, what's to come in terms of more to this bottom seating area. All right, folks. The first part is the back part, second part is the seating area, well now the third part are the armrests. The armrests are 24 inches wide by 24 inches tall. Now one added step that I'm taking to every 2x4 in this build that you guys don't have to do at all, but I'm choosing to do so, is I'm taking every 2x4 to my table saw and ripping off an eighth of an inch on every edge of the 2x4. Reason I'm doing that is mostly because I wanted to give it a cleaner, nicer look, sharper lines, but more than that, I didn't want the build to scream like it's construction material, so this kind of gives it more of that added value. Value. Once those done, I pre-drilled all the holes to prevent any kind of cracking. Now, notice I'm not using pocket holes on this, mostly because I just want to keep it simple. I am going to wood fill or wood putty all the holes, so I don't have to worry about it. Enough wood glue, plenty strong of the deck screws, nice and long. Bury them underneath the wood, and then you're ready to wipe off all the excess wood glue squeeze out, and you're ready for the final assembly. Assembly is gonna consist of the same ingredients, pocket holes and wood glue. I'm gonna place four pocket holes on the left and right hand side of the backrest. I'm gonna place them on the side that's gonna be the inner part of the backrest, basically the part that's gonna be concealed with the backrest pillows. I'm gonna lay it on its back and I'm gonna bring the armrest closer to it. I'm gonna line and measure eight inches from the ground. Basically, this is the part that's gonna have the legs dangling off of it. I'm gonna lather on some wood glue and secure it with the four pocket screws on both the left and right hand side. Seating is gonna be done the same way. I pre-drilled six pocket holes from the bottom of the seating area, plenty of wood glue squeezed out on the end grain, brought it over and secured it with the six pocket hole screws into place. For its final connection of the bottom seating area to the armrest, use plenty of wood glue, clamp it together with a clamp to make sure it's leveled, and pre-drill the hole for the screw to go in. Now, one option is to use six inch long screws, or the second option is to pre-drill the hole wide enough for you to actually fit a three inch screw and have good contact in there. We still have to finish off the bottom seating area to create the supports that basically would act like a box spring, that way the cushions don't fall through. First, I'm gonna create a frame around it, and all I'm gonna do is cut a board 69 inches long and then rip it exactly down the middle on my table saw. I'm gonna add some wood glue and screws to secure it flush, recessed on the inner parts of the bottom seating area. Basically, this is a box spring at this point. Then I'm gonna pick up three boards that are six feet long of the one by four common wood. You can also even use scrap plywood if you have a lot of it left over at the house from previous projects. And then you're just gonna secure them on the, both the front and the back side from the top with one and a quarter inch regular screws. You don't even have to use wood glue for this part. It's just for that support. Once it's in place, we're ready to start doing the finishing on this project. 
Sand off all the wood glue squeeze out and all the joints nice and flush using 80 grit sandpaper, and then finish the project off with 120 grit at the very minimum, 220 if you have the extra time. In this project, I only did 120, and trust me, the finish came off just fine. I patched up all the holes that were left from the screws for the armrest with the wood filler, just made sure I sanded them after they were dry and then I was ready for staining. For stain, my wife wanted to keep the project as light and less yellowing as possible, so I found the perfect solution of using an antique white stain from Verithane. This is not a sponsored project, but this is just a great product. Typically, my favorite way to apply it is using a brush sponge, but I found that using a rag, applying it, and then wiping it off dry within about a minute gives it a nice glazed look and keeps it nice and light as opposed to heavy and, and streaky sometimes. Now to seal and secure or waterproof this beautiful stain that we just applied, uh, typically they recommend using an oil-based product for the outdoors. Now I wanted to avoid using oil-based because it tends to yellow the wood and we're trying so hard to keep it nice, light, and bright. So I'm still using a product recommended for the outdoors. It's a product from Verithane. It's called a Spar Urethane. It's meant for the exterior. Uh, it applies with an HVLP sprayer. It applied just great. To give the project a finishing touch, I wrapped it with 50 feet of black rope on the top of the armrest. This came out really cool and it gave the project a really cool contrasted look. All right guys, I want to show you a little tip when it comes to cutting this rope. It tends to untwine, if you will. I will show you an example. As soon as you make a cut, it completely comes undone. So we don't want to ruin this braid. So here is the way we're going to actually cut that to make sure that it stays together. Uh, for the supplies, you'll just need some kind of clamps, basically so you're not touching anything hot piece of metal this is one of those allen keys you'll find in any of those you know assemble yourself kind of uh, furniture pieces uh, some kind of torch or even a lighter would work and what you want to do is take a little bit of, of uh, tape uh, I find that electrical tape works best find where you need to make your cut in my situation what about EA and you want to wrap the neck of it where the cut's gonna go I'm gonna tie this off so it doesn't come undone. We're gonna take our piece of metal and our torch and we're gonna heat it up. That should be plenty. Be very careful. And then now we're just gonna slice it down. And as you can see, just like that, it's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna finish this wrap job. Nice and snug. And that's it, it's not going anywhere. Hey guys, I am Cozy It Up here. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you're brand new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button right over there. We put a video out, don't want you to miss a single one. Like, comment, and share this one with your friends. Hey, check me out on social media. I'll put the links down in the description below. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye.